How now, brown cow? Hey everyone, Mark Colazzo. Uh, I was supposed to be at the first annual Mammoth Wine and Stein tomorrow, but we're uh, all quarantined, so the beautiful people at Mammoth wanted me to uh, talk about wine since I was going to do a blind wine tasting at the event tomorrow. Um, so I thought what better wine to talk about than sparkling wine. So we're here to do a quick, quick little class on sparkling wine. Um, I don't know if you've seen the meme going around that says quarantine isn't quarantine unless it's from the quarantine region of France. But that came from everybody be saying it's not champagne unless it's from the champagne region of France which is true. Um, in order for a wine to be called Champagne, it has to be a sparkling wine from the Champagne region and made from one or any combination of the three Champagne grapes, uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Meunier, and Pinot Noir. So there's Champagne and it has to be made in the traditional Champagne method where uh, wine is made through fermentation where they take grapes and they add yeast to make alcohol. And to make champagne, once the alcohol is made, they add another yeast into the bottle and that creates the bubbles. So that's, that's the second fermentation, they call it. And in order to be champagne, the second fermentation has to be done inside the bottle. Uh, Prosecco, which everybody's probably familiar with, is an Italian sparkling wine. And that second fermentation is made inside of a tank. So that's where you get the big difference between Prosecco and Champagne. Cava is a Spanish sparkling wine, and that's made in the traditional Champagne method. So the Champagne, the, the second fermentation is inside the bottle. Um, the Spanish kicked the Italians' asses in two things, sparkling wine and uh, ham. Iberico is way better than prosciutto, and Cava is way better than Prosecco. Sorry to say that. So we talked about champagne, Prosecco, Cava. Um, then there's always just general sparkling wine like Chandon from California or any other kind of sparkling wine. If it's from anywhere else in France, they call it Cremant. Um, so Cava and Champagne will have uh, the bubbles, which they call mousse, will be smaller and creamier as opposed to Prosecco, which will have bigger bubbles that will be a little bit harsher than a cava or a champagne. Um, let's see what else we have to go over here. Uh, how to open champagne. There's a good one. So you take the foil off and if you want to look like a pro, I'll teach you how. Should have took the foil off before I started. Screw the cage. Now here's the trick. If you want to look like a pro, normal people just start twisting this. Hold this steady, hold it right here, twist from the bottom of the bottle. And what you want to do is not let the cork blow off because that gets rid of a lot of the carbonation. You want to keep the carbonation inside as much as you can. So you want to hear as little of a pop as possible. Like that. Smells so good. Champagne has um, the traditional flavors, they call it autolytic. It's like um, biscuity, bready, yeasty is one of the main flavors you get besides like the green apple flavors. Um, and if you notice, I'm not drinking out of a champagne flute. Um, people like to drink sparkling out of a champagne flute because the thought is uh, the less surface area, the faster the bubbles dissipate. But to me, champagne is really white wine and it should be drank out of a white wine glass and you should just drink it fast enough that you don't let the bubbles dissipate. So no need for a champagne flute. Nice color on it. My daughter's laughing at me right now.
So a, a good champagne in your mouth doesn't taste like seltzer. If you ever take like a drink of seltzer and you hold it in your mouth, it's actually kind of harsh in your mouth, the, the big bubbles. Champagne, if you can see how small the bubbles are, if you hold it in your mouth, <clears throat> it actually feels like creamy and velvety in your mouth. Um, I'll give you a quick little thing on wine pairing and then we'll wrap it up so everybody can open up a bottle of something and drink. Um, People go overboard with what pairs with what and, and why. I, I believe in a couple different uh, wine pairings. Um, you want to have a, a wine that's high in acid if you're having a food that's high in fat. You need the acid to cut through a fat. And the, the best way I describe this to people is mozzarella sticks are great, but they're a lot better when you have sauce to dunk it in. So you take this big fatty piece of cheese and you deep fry it and make it even fattier, you need to dip it in a thing of tomato sauce to uh, give it some acid to cut through all the fat. Um, as far as champagne goes, uh, it pairs well with anything, I think, but the best pairing is uh, french fries or fried chicken. It's got a lot of acid and the acid cuts through the fat of the uh, french fry or the fried chicken or whatever, whatever you're eating. The bubbles really go well with the salt and uh, hope everybody can just open up a bottle of champagne tonight or cava or prosecco or cremant and get an order of french fries and enjoy yourselves. Hopefully we do wine and stein next year. I'm Mark Colazzo from the Iron Room and Rhythm and Spirits in Atlantic City and uh, everybody be safe. Thanks.